In a year as wall-to-wall -wall rammed as 2018, you'd be forgiven for being overwhelmed by sheer quality. Going back to the start, we had Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Monster Hunter World, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and Far Cry 5, only for the middle to be taken up by the glorious God of War, Detroit Become Human, and Vampire. There are obviously a ton more, but as you're likely finding out when going back through the year overall, 2018's must-plays are never-ending. Dragon Quest XI, Spider-Man, Forza Horizon 4, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, frickin' Red Dead Redemption 2. And that's before you get to Pokemon, Darksiders 3, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Just Cause 4, providing you've got any coin left. With all that in mind though, are you truly playing the best titles on the market? A quick best games of 2018 Google will highlight the majority of what I've just mentioned, but there are scores of hidden gems you should dig out, as best of all, the majority of the following are cheaper than ever. I'm Scott from Oculture.com and these are the 10 best video games of 2018 you didn't play. Number 10, Fire Pro Wrestling World. It might look as though its graphics could be rendered on a particularly sweaty sock, but Fire Pro Wrestling World is the very definition of it's what's on the inside that counts. Coming complete with a ridiculously in-depth suite of customization options, it lets you create anything from Michael Myers vs. Donald Trump to a unique title belt and ring combo named after your hometown. But it's Fire Pro's time-tested gameplay where things get very interesting indeed. Rather than focus on the all-out simulation aspect of WWE 2K, Fire Pro is all about timing. Grapples only work if you tap the right buttons in the right response windows, but you've also got exhaustion and general match momentum to think of too. Taunting, looking for weapons, pulling off high-flying turnbuckle moves, and considering when to drop a finisher are all paramount, especially when you dive into the New Japan Pro Wrestling-themed career mode and need to impress your fellow athletes. Learning to love its early 90s slash Game Boy Advance graphics is the only hurdle standing between you and the finest arcade wrestling game money can buy. Number 9, Life is Strange 2. Fixing all the cringeworthy dialogue problems of the original by leaping into a different cast of characters, the only place I can be my selfie is in the dark room. It's easy to overlook Life is Strange 2 as just another Telltale clone, especially when Telltale themselves have sadly gone out of business. Sticking with that mentality would be a problem though, as writers Christian Devine and Jean-Luc Cano have crafted a story around two runaway brothers, unwittingly triggering supernatural powers and having to deal with the consequences. The first game was very much the same too, as protagonist Max's time warps could be used to fully explore a dialogue tree or a particular plot path, only to rewind and try again. These more gameplay-focused ideas differentiate Life is Strange, and though at time of writing, the sequel only has one episode of its second season out, it's a gut-punchingly resonant combination of police brutality, racially charged America, and that homegrown don't-nod charm that only they can pull off. If your 2018 has been heavy on action and light on story, Life is Strange 2 has you covered. Number 8, Unravel 2. Unravel 2 is nothing short of the most delightful and cutesy platformer this side of Kirby's epic yarn. In fact, thanks to its mix of yarn ball protagonists and a real-world setting awash in autumnal color palettes and floral scenery, it might just be even more lovable. Gameplay-wise, it's a physics-based side-scroller, and though you can play solo swapping between both characters to complete puzzles, it takes on a life of its own once you and a partner tackle everything together. Suddenly, you're both tandem swinging or catching one another, forming tight ropes so that one of you can reach faraway collectibles. It looks stunning, has just the right difficulty curve across the main progression, and even unlocks a bunch of stupidly hard platforming gauntlets if all you want is a more severe challenge when all said and done. Number 7, Rainbow Six Siege. Yes, this came out back in 2015, but to be honest, release dates mean increasingly little to games that get completely overhauled in the time between launch and now. In Rainbow Six Siege's case, it's been updated considerably yet again in 2018, and that qualifies for inclusion here. Especially as if you check the Steam charts, it's one of the world's most played games over on PC. Basically, this is Ubisoft channeling all their immense wealth for good, releasing one of the best tactical shooters of all time. There are multiple PvE and objective modes or tutorials to leap into, but PvP is where it's at. Doing its own spin on the hero shooter, Siege comes with a host of operators, all with their own signature abilities and equipment. Combining them with a game engine that lets you blast apart the environment itself to score headshots and flanks literally makes for the most intense first-person shooter exchanges on any platform, ensuring no two matches are the same, but maintaining fairness throughout. From listening out for footsteps to watching CCTV footage, laying down tripwires to detonating the ceiling and catching someone waiting above, Siege deserves to be mentioned alongside Call of Duty and Battlefield, minus Battlefield 5, as a premier military FPS. Also, as another jab at the king, you won't find any Black Ops 4 hit detection issues here. Number 6, The Messenger. Okay, so I'm gonna make you care about The Messenger. Are you ready? You can time travel, and doing so means the game shifts its graphical and soundtrack style from 8-bit to 16-bit. You literally go between two of the most beloved and nostalgic time periods in entertainment history on the fly by leaping through a zone on the map. Done. Oh, you, you want more? Well, in terms of a plot, you're playing as the titular messenger, sent to retrieve a mystical scroll, but naturally everything blows out from there. 
Brilliantly, developer Sabotage Studio clearly grew up playing all manner of NES and SNES classics, not to mention they're pretty great at poking fun at the games industry overall through a lovable fourth wall breaking merchant. Combined, the result is a side scrolling platformer that revels in the old school whilst also providing a supremely tight and hilarious script alongside an enjoyable array of powers and attacks to bust out. Lastly, it's worth pointing out that past the halfway mark, this turns from a platformer into a Metroidvania. Its second half isn't anywhere near as strong as its first, but it's almost two games in one. I like to think of it as the developers paying tribute to two of the most beloved genres of all time, and either way, the messenger overall is damn special. Oh, and the soundtrack in both the NES and SNES style versions completely bangs. Number five, The Swords of Ditto. There's a bit of a golden age going on in TV right now in regards to animated shows tackling all sorts of mature subject matter. I'm looking at you over the garden wall, but now we have that same in vogue art style being applied to a challenging Zelda style roguelike. Playing as the never ending lineage of swords, warriors who wield the titular weapon against the unstoppable evil named Mormo, you're given a handful of days with which to grind out levels and prepare for a final boss fight. Toys are your special items, ranged attacks and spells, but gameplay is otherwise the same as Link to the Past. A whole bunch of dungeons, a whole bunch of puzzles, and a whole bunch of slicing every enemy to pieces inside an inviting open world. Coolest of all, everything is procedurally generated upon respawn, giving Swords of Ditto a nice sense of replayability alongside its adorable, gorgeous presentation. Number 4, Reigns, Game of Thrones. I seldom recommend Android or iOS releases, but Nereal's Reigns franchise has acquired the Game of Thrones license and it's a perfect match. Playing as the main cast of the show and set towards a time period inspired by the end of Season 7, you'll initially attempt to rule Westeros as Daenerys, only to inevitably get stabbed in the back, killed by the public, or stabbed in a bar fight, unlocking more characters. Gameplay is as simple as swiping left for one decision and right for another, but the world building, plot paths, and decision making are all solid and engaging. Four meters comprising power, religion, the love of the people, and the Iron Bank are constantly in flux with every swipe too. Meaning you can live out your fantasies of hacking down the Faith Militant, but the denizens of King's Landing will likely stone you to death afterwards. Overall, a neat, effective, and fan service heavy experience, I guarantee this was not on your radar until now. Number 3, Into the Breach. Released on PC at the start of the year, this FTL follow-up is a perfect fit for the Switch's drop-in, drop-out appeal. Playing as a time-resetting group of world saviors, though only one of you can return at a time, you're tasked with using an army of battle mechs to take on skyscraper-sized aliens that burrow up out of the earth. As you can see from gameplay, it's immediately very chess-like. Taking turns, positioning, and thinking five steps ahead is paramount, and factoring your surroundings in affects every decision. Thankfully, Into the Breach has clearly been playtested to perfection, and subset games are the maestros of putting you into situations where only the most accurate tactical thought will see you through. Fan of XCOM, Final Fantasy Tactics, or Advance Wars, this is your new obsession. Number 2, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Currently receiving a very bad rap thanks to releasing in fragmented form if you chose to buy physical, Starlink's gameplay is actually great fun. On Switch, you can enjoy a fully voiced and cutscene filled campaign as Star Fox, essentially making this the best Star Fox game since Star Fox 64. Outside of that, Ubisoft's Saturday morning cartoon meets No Man's Sky and Destiny style setup is a delight to engage with. Ship controls are responsive as hell, letting you jostle and circle enemies, pulling off barrel rolls or 180 inverts to get a bead on who's behind you. Weapons are swapped out at a steady clip so you can rotate through flamethrowers, gravity orbs, gauss machine guns, and plenty more. Like an old school arcade shooter done on a massive scale with fun characters and great art design, Starlink is also the first time a AAA 4K ready game on PS4 and Xbox One has looked nigh on indistinguishable from its Switch counterpart. Good on the developers, but bad on those horrific pricing policies. Number 1, Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. Sneaking onto shelves when we all thought the year was done for, developers Bearded Ladies Consulting have produced something that plays like XCOM meets Beyond Good and Evil 2's art design with this War of Mine's overall tone. Granted, many of the line deliveries are machoed up to the point of being occasionally cringe, but this turn-based strategy has a thick slice of stealth up its sleeve to compensate. Unlike XCOM, although XCOM 2 did show you enemy awareness zones so you could plan ambushes effectively, Mutant Year Zero lets you control a squad with one-to-one -one movement as opponents embark on routines and animations. This means you can thin the ranks ahead of deploying, put team members in advantageous positions and spring your plan from multiple angles at precisely the right time. You'll need to do all of this because Road to Eden gets hella hard hella quick. Thankfully, it's mystery what's really going on narrative keeps things moving nicely, and its crew of anthropomorphized warrior creatures are a delight to pilot through some Last of Us style environments. I came away thoroughly impressed by Mutant Year Zero. It borrows just enough from XCOM whilst bringing innovative elements to the table to make for something altogether quite special. And that's my list. Let me know down in the comments below if there were any other hidden gems that you picked up from across 2018. And please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever else you can think of. Jules' t-shirts are available over at shop.whatculture.com. I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.